A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, and neglect justice and the love of God. Those you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like graves which are not seen, and men walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you, lawyers also, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord continues with his rebuke of the Pharisees, but as we've said before, uh, it is for the purpose of correcting them with the hope that they might actually convert and come to love him and to join themselves to him. And he speaks specifically, as he has in the past, of their love of human glory and human honor. They love to take the high seats in the synagogues, so even in the place where God is the one who should take that elevated place in the minds of everyone, you can see that they are trying to occupy that very place of God, the one who should be seated in the minds of everyone in the highest place, the one who should be seated in the hearts of everyone in the highest place. And they seek this self-elevation to the detriment of all those whom they are supposed to be caring for and leading to that deep love and that deep knowledge of God. Woe to you! For you are like graves which are not seen. They are these covered over places which people walk across almost indifferent because they are not aware of the danger that exists there. But they end up becoming graves, which is basically where people who are dead lie. And so instead of giving and communicating the life of God, they become a snare and a trap which brings death because they are not, again, acting according to God's will, to his truth and to his love. But the Lord has been offering them these means by which they can purify their interior, and he offers the same to all of us as well. Like the lawyer, we cannot think that these woes that the Lord deals out to the Pharisees do not apply to us as well. One of the lawyers begins to realize this, and he says, Teacher, in saying this, you reproach us also. <laughs> That's a good insight into Scripture. That's a good insight into the Word of God. When he rebukes, that we also take it personally. Whenever he commends, we can at some times take that as well personally. But also we must not miss when the Lord is correcting. And when he is correcting, we must say and ask ourselves, how does this apply to me? How can I change to make sure that I am not falling into the same traps? And the Lord offers as St. Ambrose when he comments very beautifully on this whole scene, and he says, the Lord is offering to them the means by which they can cleanse their hearts and their souls. As he says in the gospel that we had yesterday, first and foremost, there is almsgiving, which he says will cleanse them. Almsgiving has power to cleanse our soul, to wash us clean. But also, so does faith. Faith has power to cleanse the heart. But as St. Ambrose points out, so simply also does Christ's word. As he says in John's gospel to his disciples, you have been made clean by the words which I have spoken to you. So by the reception of God's word, by prayerfully considering it, by giving alms, we are cleansing ourselves interiorly through these actions. What also St. Ambrose goes on to say, which I think is very beautiful, he says that when the Lord is rebuking the scribes and Pharisees because they focus on the minutia with great intensity and they neglect the higher things. And he says you should do these higher things without neglecting anything. Do all of them, but get them in the right order. And he says you should not as well as they do neglect justice and the love of God. 
with some, with some interpretations in translations, it is neglecting justice and mercy. And what St. Ambrose says is that to neglect justice is when we do not eradicate from our lives the things that St. Paul was speaking about in the first reading today. All of that list of different sins and vices that can creep into human life. And when we neglect justice is when we neglect to uproot these things from our soul. But he says also we neglect mercy when we first and foremost do not have mercy towards ourselves. He says we cannot be merciful to others if we are not merciful with our own selves first. And so St. Ambrose says, go deep into your soul and into your heart, and there you will find that you are begging for God. And he says, to this beggar that is interior, give everything that he asks for which is to be fed by God, to be nourished upon God, to live by God's grace. And in doing this, we have mercy to our own selves. And then we can go out and have that same mercy towards others. And that mercy towards ourselves is that we give to our souls God's grace through the sacraments, that we nourish our souls upon God's word, which is that beautiful manna from heaven. As, it comes, as he comes to us, through the scriptures, but also here in the Holy Eucharist, as we receive him who is the nourishment of our souls. When we receive Holy Communion, we are being merciful to ourselves as God is being merciful to us in that moment as well. As he gives himself for the nourishment of our souls, it is mercy to ourselves when we receive him. When we receive the medicine of our souls, the one who is able to save us and the nourishment of the spiritual life. Amen.